The Penguin episode two just dropped. It was pretty awesome. And I want to talk about it. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, click subscribe. We talk Penguin all the time and more, obviously. And ding that bell to make sure that you stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Let's get right to it. Penguin Inside Man, the second episode of the first and possibly only season of the show. Just drop spoilers ahead. Not crazy spoilers. I don't know if there's a ton to actually spoil on this. <laughs> there is. Uh, but we're going to just talk about it off the cuff. Just a great conversation about Penguin uh, episode two, Inside Man. I thought it was a great episode. Right off the bat, you get to see Sophia Falcone in Arkham talking to her brother, seeing her brother's murder uh, from inside the prison cell where we see the Riddler and the Batman. It's the Arkham Asylum, you know, and they're having a conversation and he gets popped and uh, there's blood everywhere. And then you realize that she's being hypnotized by her psychiatrist, Julian Rush, who is not from the comics, but... Uh, is Theo Rossi's playing him? And Theo Rossi's a great actor. Um, I don't think they're going to move this character beyond this show, but it could be this universe's version of The Scarecrow was my first thought watching it. I was like, oh yeah, because I'm looking for the Mad Hatter. If anybody knows me or knows this channel, you know that I'm looking for the Mad Hatter to make a little tiny appearance here. Uh, I wanted, I thought that, I didn't want it. I thought that was happening in the Batman. I'm thinking... It's going to happen in this show at some point. The Mad Hatter is such a low-level uh, villain of the week kind of villain that I think he can work in the underbelly of Gotham as a throwaway villain. So Julian Rush, Mad Hatter? No. Scarecrow, most likely the hypnosis stuff really kind of made me go, oh, maybe they're doing that. Because we've seen Scarecrow, right? Scarecrow was in three Batman movies already. Big president presence in the Arkham games. Everyone knows Scarecrow. Why not keep him smaller and just do a different version of him when you're not focusing on the scarecrow right that's what i love about this batman universe is there's all these villains are running around hangman obviously sophia falcone's hangman but they real they were like she is hangman like they're not hiding away from it they're not trying to like be like well she you know in the comics she is but here she's more grounded she is more grounded obviously but she's hangman and they're they're really flowing into that throwing themselves into that but they also are reserving her right they don't want her to fully accept that that's who she is she wants to be i think she wants to be prim and proper like carmine like that's how she wants to be but this the, the hangman is kind of in the back of her mind like trying to grab her and bring her back and pull her back into psychoticness so that i love that that essence of it but again that's another villain that shows up so we have you know hangman joker riddler and the Falcon Penguin and Catwoman, and but they all live in this world, and they all have their 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 purposes separate from each other. It's not you know the way that the old Batman movies obviously worked was you're like this is the villain that we're hunting down in this one. It's like no, these all live, and they and 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 they are the population of this Gotham City. The one big thing that I really took away from this that I really loved from this episode was there was a reference to Batman No Man's Land. Because they, they call it a no man's land. This whole area of Gotham obviously has been flooded. It's been destroyed. And it is a no man's land, which got me right thinking to the comic. And obviously I'm going right into what is Batman 2 going to be about? Is Batman 2 going to be about no man's land? Are they slowly hinting at no man's land being it? Because if you know no man's land, there's a lot of aspects going on. And the way they've built this world. And I mean, it's not an earthquake. Obviously it's a flood. But the dynamics are very similar. So I would love to see how they bring us into into that if they do this could just be again just a nice little batman batman reference but i think uh, look i'm waiting for a mad hatter but the one thing with this show that's great is is it is not a superhero show they've they've crossed genres it is definitely like the mobster show it is the goodfellas it is very much the godfather of it all especially with the drug aspect going on uh, it's very godfathery and you're seeing now the rise of power that oz is on he kind of hints so at the beginning of the episode he makes or i think it's a big inner middle whatever he talks to Vic about how uh, he was a driver for another for another mobster, and that mobster was working with the feds, and Carmine popped him, but he saw something in in Penguin. And and I'm of two minds right now, but it's like, are they foreshadowing Penguin's death? I can't see how I can't see how you can kill Penguin in this series, and then Batman Two starts with, and the Penguin's been killed. I can see Penguin dying at the beginning of Batman Two, but I don't know if I see. Penguin dying at the end of the series necessarily. Uh, but so they tease that. But then they also are teasing maybe Victor, maybe he's putting something in Victor's head. He has a great moment with Victor at the end of the episode, too, where Victor's burying these two bodies 
Uh, because so basically Sophia's gone to a police officer and he's a crooked cop. She's like, find out who, who. So there's a big like drug bust early on with Penguin. He goes to Maroney and he goes, hey, we're going to, I'll make sure you guys get the, the goods. And so Penguin has a big setup. Everybody is killed. Penguin survives. Penguin's made out to be a hero on this. Um, but as it goes on, Sophia's like, I got to find out who did this because who did this killed her brother. So just trying to figure that out, she hires a crooked cop who's who's hooked on the drops and the cop finds a member of of the gang. And he's like of the Maroney gang. And he's like, hey, hey, uh, I got this guy. I drugged him. He's going to wake up when he wakes up. He'll give you the information. Penguin gets to him first. They try to plan stuff on VD. Doesn't work out. Penguin ends up killing him and they end up setting up uh, Sophia's bodyguard guy. And uh, so he gets shot dead. And Penguin has to bury the body of him and of both the dead guys. And he does that. He has a great moment with, with Victor where he's like, don't close your eyes. Take a look. This is what, because Victor was supposed to plant evidence in VD's car, got scared or got caught, scared to do it. And he goes, if you, if you know, if you screw up, this is what happens. Death is a one way ticket. He kind of gives him that talk. I thought it was very good. Then at the end, Sophia and, and Penguin are like, they're going to be in an alliance to take over the family business. And Penguin's like, all right, I'm with you. And Happy Together plays, <laughs> which was, I think, a great, you think just the position, but I think Happy Together is kind of like, they're not very happy together. But it was a great, it was a great play on words, a great song. Uh, and it was great. But in this episode, again, you get to see, you know, Oz's rise to power. Sophia Falcone kind of right there with him. And, and you see really how, I think you see in this episode how smart Oz is, how clever he is, how fast on his feet he is, and how ruthless and violent he is and can be when he needs to be. That's not the path he necessarily wants to take, but that's the one he's going to go to if he thinks it best serves serves his narrative. He is willing to do that, and he'll take it down. So I, I I thought this episode was a great episode again, great progression in this show. A fun episode. Was it Jonathan Crane? Are we going to Batman No Man's Land? How crazy is the Reeves verse going to get? I don't think it's going to go that crazy. I think we're still going at more of like the Court of Owls, maybe Hush type storyline. But right now, this show is so separate from Batman. I'm loving that it's separate from Batman. And that's kind of what makes it special. Like you don't, it doesn't rely on the superhero aspect of it. It is, it's just a, it's just a fantastic show with fantastic characters and a fantastic narrative that grips you and pulls you in. But still, again, I, I, I want to, when this is all done over like the course of like a year, probably I want to watch the Batman and Penguin all in one motion. Maybe before before the, the Batman 2 comes out, just watch them all in order. See how that goes. I'll take a day off, get some popcorn, probably like a tub of popcorn, like a bathtub full of popcorn because it'll be such a long, long event. I think it's eight hours of TV and three hours of a movie. You're like, that's a day. That's a day. That's like when people went to go see the the MCU to the Avengers lineup. It's a little crazy. Maybe it'll be fun to do though. See, just to see how it works continuity wise and and have fun with it. Let me know. Did you guys like this episode? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time. Rah, 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 rah.